Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Before I start the readings, I wanted to let you know that I do have some new online courses available on how to read oracle cards and crystals and spirituality, so click on the link below to check them out. Hi Virgo, it's Sloan Rhodes here with your life purpose, career, and money reading for the months of May, June, and July 2018. This is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Okay, so Virgo, today I'm going to be drawing one card from the Earth Magic deck by Stephen Farmer. Three cards from the Life Purpose deck by uh, Doreen Richard. Three cards from the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. And then in the area of your money, I'll get one card from the Money Tarot by Eugene Benitsky. And I'll close out your reading, Virgo, with a card from the Numerology deck. And Virgo, all the love readings are also up, so you're welcome to take a listen over there. And to remind you that this reading and all readings are available on my, on my <laughs> podcast on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, so you can listen to the reading as well as watch it here on the YouTube channel. And the online courses are also up. There's a link below. Okay, so Virgo, let's just go ahead and get started. Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Right, purpose and career. And money. Okay, there we go. All right. Wake up call. Ooh. <laughs> Tsunami. That looks a little ominous. <laughs> but we have the beautiful fairies under the deck. Fairy magic. Earth magic. Well, regardless of what this is, you are very grounded and very supported. Um, on the earthly plane, which is super nice to see. Wake up call. Well, I see here with the tsunami that it looks like there is a big shift in terms of your, your work in the world, in terms of your sense of purpose. Uh, it's like the, the moon, that full moon here is, is uh, pulling on the tide. You know, it's creating this, this giant shift, which, you know, can be very, very exciting. Let's get some additional cards and see. I'm a Virgo myself, so. Let's see what this is all about. Nothing to be afraid of. You know, I mean, the color is very dark. Um, but it's just because it's ruled by the moon. So not only is the lunar energy powerful, divine feminine energy, so you're very open and receptive to the changes to this wake-up call. Um, but you've invited it through your own opening and awareness of self. So that's really, really nice to see. And... It's a huge um, wave, you know, so it, there are, um, it's very buoyant, you know, it's very supportive. Divinely guided even. There may be a little bit of a trickster energy too with the fairies. The fairies love to be, you know, a little mischievous. Oh, oh wait, let me get the, I'm sorry, let me get the life purpose cards first. I'll show you the cards again. So the fairies are under the deck with magic. And then we have the wake up call. See, it's nothing to be scared of. I will say that for some of some Virgos, as it's coming in, um, the wake up call is uh, to pull your head up now and then and look around. <laughs> um, because sometimes Virgos can get very hyper-focused on doing the right thing and being responsible, but they miss out on all the blessings of all their hard work. So for some of you that may be at play here. Okay, here we go. Books. You connect to your life purpose through your involvement with books. Freedom. 
you're free to do what you choose. Beautiful energy right in the center. And flowers. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to, other, to others through your life purpose. We have family under the deck. Loving your friends and family is central to your life purpose. As I mentioned, Virgos can be very responsible, hyper-focused on family and making sure everyone's taken care of, often at uh, the expense of themselves, which is, as I mentioned, sometimes that wake-up call can refer to that. You know, like, look around, Virgo, and make sure you're seeing the blessings that you have and that your hard work has um, helped to grow. Okay, so let me show you the cards as I see them. So we have the books here. I kind of feel like this is in the past, even though I haven't been doing it as a past, present, future spread, but just the way she's focused on the past there. Um, we have freedom right in the center. Uh, your hard work has created an opening here, the availability for more options. And then we have flowers as well, which is just a soft, beautiful energy. It goes so nicely with the fairies. <laughs> fairies are all about flowers and crystals and earth magic. Um, so for some of you, it may be that you find a sense of purpose in nature, in with the flowers, um, with the mysticism that comes with that, the mystical, metaphysical aspects of being um, in nature, being in connection to um, flower energy, fairy energy. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to others through your life purpose. It could even be working with flower, flower essences, this kind of thing. Um, and for some of you, books has been a, um, a big focus, but I kind of feel like this is falling by the wayside. You know, she's looking in the past, and it was very hyper-focused on one thing, as I mentioned with the wake-up call. Like, look around, Virgo. There's a whole world around you, and you've helped to create these opportunities for freedom, for more joy and play, um, but you've got to look around. So for some of you, make sure that it doesn't get to the point where you end up getting sick or something, <laughs> and that is the wake-up call because you haven't been paying attention to all the bounty around you. You've been so hyper-focused, you work yourself into an early grave kind of energy. Um, but that's just for some of you. Um, I love this. You're free to do what you choose. It's right in the center. It's very orangey and yellow. It's very creative, um, confident energy, playful energy. Once again, we have that water theme here. Um, for some of you, maybe spending some time by the water or by the ocean would be really, really beneficial for you. Um, unless you're afraid of tsunamis. <laughs> um, but I love that. Even her arms are open. She's just like, yeah, you know, play dolphins and have fun. And, and you know, I want to be a part of that energy. And you can begin to make the shift here, Virgo, away from a more studious, more sort of hyper-focused energy to more freedom and play in your life without even venturing out the door just by connecting to that energy of play within self, you know? What would it look like to be able to, to be free to choose whatever I want? And how wonderful that energy would feel. Wouldn't it be, what would it feel like to be like a playful dolphin, you know, and to, to swim with them and to go in whatever direction I chose and to always have my, my little pods supporting me? What would that feel like? And nudge yourself into that kind of energy. We always have the freedom of our mind, the freedom of the choices we make in terms of our thoughts to help to begin to manifest on the earthly plane um, more of that energy. Let me get some cards from the, um, the tarot deck here. And of course, family. <laughs> Always important, um, important aspect. But remember that family isn't just about obligation and making sure that everyone's taken care of. Family is about play, about receiving support as well as giving support, increasing your family so that they can love you back, not just you give to them. Sometimes Virgos forget that. You get to receive as well. It may be that there is something that occurs within the family that is kind of the wake up, you know, like be any, it doesn't have to be bad, just could be, you know, some, some event, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's fun to, you know, connect to my family and to have them support me and love me.
the tsunami is a bit like the tower in the tarot, in the tarot deck, you know, it's a bit like uh, something occurs that, you know, you can't sort of ignore. <laughs> it's kind of a big event. But for you, it helps to create more freedom. You're free to do what you choose now. Lovely energy. For some Virgos, that will cause anxiety. <laughs> oh no, what do I choose? What do I do? You know, being used to the structure and the progressional energy. It's really windy outside. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, here we go, Virgo. We have the world in reverse. We have the eight of wands. We have the ten of swords. We have the daughter of swords and um, under the deck here, you're, you know, inquiry, you're seeing the situation clearly here. There may be a conversation um, that occurs or some sort of research that you do online or in a short exchange with someone that helps to open your eyes. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm perceiving the situation differently now. Okay, so let me show you the cards as I see them. So we have the world in reverse. We have that eight of wands right in the center. And then we have the Ten of Swords, don't be afraid. <laughs> A dramatic end here. Uh, the Ten of Swords, you know, the thing about the Ten of Swords, first and foremost, and we have the tsunami, so this idea of the, you know, the big event occurring, the Ten of Swords, a dramatic end. But I don't feel like it's necessarily negative, even though it's the Ten of Swords that looks negative, with the, you know, he's pierced, his eyes pierced. But for me, it's about perception. It goes with the Daughter of Swords. You, something occurs, and the way that you've been perceiving a situation, the way that you've been thinking about it, the paradigms around it, your expectations and agendas attached to it no longer work anymore. They're just done. And the thing about the Ten of Swords is that there's always a relief with it, I found. Even though it's, it's sometimes it can be very dramatic, very kind of diva-like, you know, with the Ten of Swords. It's just so much, oh my God, you know. It can feel very dramatic. It can be a big deal. Um, but it always leads to something new, but you have to, but when it occurs, what occurs often with the 10 of swords is that you are kind of forced to rethink things, to look at things differently than you did before. You know, we have the wake up call. Um, you have to change your perspective, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> um, okay. So we have the world here. And the world, as I feel it, you know, here is there is something that is not yet ready to be written off and completed. It could be something you've been working on um, and you thought you were done with, and here it comes around. There's final edits to do. There's, there's one last, you know, version that needs to be written, this kind of thing. It's not quite ready to put to bed yet. That's okay. It could be for some of you actually very specifically around a book that you're writing and you have to go back and re-edit some chapters or, or revise some of the work. Okay, it's very, it can be very specific meaning for some of you. This is a general reading for many, many Virgos, so um, not everyone's going to be a writer, but for some of you that is at play. Um, but we have freedom here and with the freedom we have travel, you know, the Eight of Wands. We have this um, energy around traveling, um, around communication, very, very busy time. So I like this for you, Virgo. It's very, it's um, not stagnant energy. Again, we have the wake up call. It may have something to do with family. Maybe not, but um, family's on your mind for sure. Um, and the wake up call is like, boom, you know, you got, you've got to, you've got to look at things differently here. And this is how I'm seeing it with the daughter of swords and the 10 of swords. And what's really, really nice is that you are seeing things clearly. There is communication um, where someone is asking about what you think. They're, they're probing. They're curious about you. And also you are curious too. And you want to make sure you're clear. You know, it's, it's nice energy. 
and it's, it's inspiring energy and there's a certain degree of wisdom that comes with this conversation or this exchange that occurs. It's not all bad. <laughs> you know, this feels bad. And this may be why with the flowers energy here, there's a so, so gentle and soft with the flower energy. And then you have this, this very drastic, again, very kind of diva, you know, dramatic kind of end. But this flower energy may help to kind of mitigate some of the, the sharper edges of this. Um, gentle, gentle energy there. And right in the center, though, the tsunami, the freedom, the eight of wands. Again, it could be travel, could be just a big event. But whatever it is, there is suddenly a lot more freedom where you are able to travel, you're able to communicate. Things finally move, right? It could be that there's been this period of stagnation and then boom, things move, which is really, really nice. I'm going to get a couple cards on the Ten of Swords and the Tsunami. Let's see if I can get some additional information. And somehow the flowers is connected to that too. So. Let me take the flowers out of that actually. It's just on the Ten of Swords and the Tsunami. What is this about? And the reason with the Ten of Swords energy, even though it can feel awful sometimes um, and very dramatic, again, this ending, like, oh my God, it's done. But um, there's that feeling of relief that comes with it. It's, it's, it, it's like you have to begin to look at things differently. And that's what's been causing the suffering in many ways. It's your attachment, your agenda, your expectations, this kind of thing. What is this about for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising? How is it likely to? How does it affect them? about the ace of wands and the ace of swords is how it affects you we have justice there under the deck all right so there is <laughs> this sense of injustice um, here could be legal proceedings that don't go your way um, for some of you it'd be very specific meaning for others of you it may just be that you feel like things just didn't work out the way that you thought they were supposed to again this ten of swords goes back to this uh, your perceptions is uh, an ending to agendas and expectations and the justice card you know it feels even worse when you're like you were really attached to a certain outcome thing you know you had a, 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 an agenda that had to occur in order for you to feel happy or whatever and the wake-up call is maybe it just doesn't go your way um, but it's about something new um, new inspiration uh, possibly an offer that comes in um, that you were super excited about that had a lot of potential um, and something occurs where with the Ace of Swords, there's possibly some kind of argument um, or someone doesn't take action upon it. You don't take action upon it or there's a potential for it, but then someone just didn't have the, the energy or the impetus to, to really make it work. And, and then there's this feeling of letdown. But, you know, <laughs> the good news is there's tremendous freedom that comes with that. So, you know, this is why changing your perception, changing your expectations and agendas, or watching them, recognizing how they can become very egoic. You know, I have, it has to work out this way. Um, whatever this Ace of Wands is for you. This is what this is about. You know, this is all this potential. New business, new opportunity, 
you had so much inspiration for it. And then it didn't, and then there was either, like I said, some sort of argument about it or someone just didn't take control of the situation or you didn't take control. No one really, you know, just no one really drove it home, so to speak. Um, and then again, the feeling of the let, the let down, like, oh man, that was supposed to work out a certain way. You know, there's the agenda, there's the egoic attachment. But when you can recognize Okay, there's freedom in this ending. There's no more suffering because I, I withdraw my expectation and hope around it. And then everything opens up because you're free to do what you want. Communication flows, you know, you become busy. There's travel possibilities, this kind of thing. So nothing, nothing to worry about, but something to be aware of that during this time frame that may indeed occur. Now, how you handle it is going to be up to you, of course, as always. And the degree to which it affects you will depend upon your own, you know, circumstances and your own way of being in the world. So just, I wouldn't worry about it, but it looks like, as I mentioned, the freedom, I would focus more on the freedom and the eight of, eight of wands there. Again, with that fairy's earth magic kind of under the deck, it's that a little bit of trickster energy. You know, sometimes a little misdirection, like look over here, look over here, but then really the real, the real good stuff is coming here with the, the soft flower energy, the nurturing, the quiet. All right, let's look at your money, Virgo, and then wrap up this reading. <laughs> King of Cups in reverse. Well, the King of Cups in reverse around your money, it could be that there is a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, who's involved in your money. Um, and this person would, I wouldn't rely on this person to uh, do, do with your money what it is you want to do with your money. You know, if you are looking to invest in uh, causes and companies that are more um, socially conscious, I wouldn't rely on this guy <laughs> to do it, you know. Um, also, I'd be really aware of anyone who's handling your money who may have a drinking problem as well. Um, but also, with the King of Cups in reverse, there could be someone, uh, either a person or an, you know, an individual or an institution that's, that, which is where you earn your money, where you derive your source of income from, who is, you know, really just not the, the nicest guy. He's just a little emotionally abusive. Maybe he uses money as a game, uses it as a tool to manipulate. Um, could be a boss, could be the, the institution that you work for, the company. Um, could be a manager who's playing games with your reviews, this kind of thing. So just be aware. It may be the wake up call that you need, you know, to go on to something else. Um, so a, kind of a mixed bag for you during this particular time frame, Virgo. Um, but remember, you hold your own power. You hold your own sense of, sense of strength always. And there is this beautiful freedom card right in the center of your reading, which is absolutely gorgeous. And you access this. You have the choice to access this energy whenever you desire. You don't have to go out and get it. Sorry, it's really windy, so I don't know if you can hear that. But... Um, you can you can access this this whenever you you know whenever you desire. So if you find that you're getting really bogged down and worried, nudge yourself as often as you can into. Wouldn't it be nice if I, you know, was free to do whatever I wanted? What would I do with my time? How could I take that energy and utilize it for the greatest good of all? 
You know, and you start to play with that energy. Let me get one more card for you, Virgo, and I'll close out your reading because it's gone long. Music. Beautiful. I also see this as change, you know, 3 plus 2 equals 5. This goes so beautifully with this. And with this. <laughs> you know, all this orangey, creative, inspired energy. Listen to the music that inspires you. Listen to um, the, music, the music of your own heart. You know, I know it sounds a little trite, but it's true. Um, and maybe that you actually get to travel. <laughs> Um, where's that eight of swords, eight of wands, to go see some music, you know, and this provides you with new inspiration. Um, maybe that through music you find your sense of freedom. So there's a lot of ways this can play out um, for Virgos. It's a general reading, so, you know, if you'd like your own private reading, of course, you're welcome to make an appointment. I also do uh, Reiki sessions, um, but in the meantime, I wish you much love, Virgo, and I will uh, see you on the next video.